just a simple thing. There's more moisture, more puddles, more wet mud. And when I rode it on the Rocky Mountain the other week, and it does show how much a trail can play on the mind when you see those puddles and the roots are wet and glistening and the mud just doesn't look forgiving but there's no traction on it all of a sudden it's a different experience and this is just sketchy mud now so yeah it's uh Ooh. not actually sure I would have ridden it any better on the Rocky Mountain altitude to be fair <laughs> because I just haven't got the speed Ooh. to actually ride those drops without rolling it I don't know, I just don't feel like the bike is gripping. And of course you come to a big drop like that, you can still roll it. You know? I mean, I think this one is a bit tastier though. I remember having, uh, yeah, you can't roll that one. And uh, gotta be honest, even on those rolls, this back wheel was buzzing my backside. <sighs> That's not good. Oh. Oh. Maybe I would just be as bad on the Rocky Mountain altitude. I'm gonna have to go back and check the video. I put it up three weeks ago. And I rode this and the Rocky Mountain altitude, 27.5, 150 mil travel. Bike park figures. I was flying down there, and now I'm not. And I'm wondering how much of it is my mind. How much of it is the bike and how much of it is the conditions? Or is it all of those factors literally compounding to make this a much different ride? It's more slow, more overly cautious. Seriously. Yeah, well, hard at the turn. On the 29er, uh, that's the other beauty of that Rocky Mountain altitude is so nimble, so agile. There's a rather long giant trance. Of course, it's long because it's got that linkage, the micro linkage, which I believe adds length to the bike. Okay. Bit of a difficult task getting down here. Oh my goodness. Right. I think the fork actually bottomed on that then. Obviously I'm glad that I didn't crash on that, but it was terrible. It was terrible. It was like a really hard landing. I was trying to get back, but without the speed, certain drops are just not gonna be kind to you. And on a short travel bike, it's always in the back of your mind, isn't it? Have I got enough travel? There's just something about Roots Maneuver in the wet.
Ooh. Hit a compression. Might have damaged the fork. <laughs> I've done that again. <laughs> Ran a little bit too on the right. Get a coffee. Oh. Oh. I'm coming into land. Pulls and trails me. Gotta choose your line with the giant trance. You can't just blast into stuff, you know. Oh. We'll be stripping this uh, free hub tonight because it's uh, a bit of a shame. As you rode uh, Turk and Carval Trail to the right. Yes. Uh, I just don't know what, what can cause that. But now it's the, the whole teeth engagement thing. As you may have noticed from my previous videos, if they go into silverfish and under warranty, um, the shock was rebuilt. Somehow, 
manages to uh, bypass new product development and it still has that issue where if you ride really rough stuff it can actually lock out which <laughs> it does actually feel like it's locked out now oh. oh notice the problem no drive 